I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News, here at the Barrel Elites Alternative Investments Conference, and I'm joined by John Farrell with Vertical. Uh, I guess you you would call yourself sort of like an not an investment firm, but you're looking at data uh, that you collect on the World Wide Web, and there's a lot of it out there. There's a lot of it out there. We collect data to help decision makers make better decisions. Okay. So we collect publicly available information from the, the World Wide Web, organize it, and, and present it in such a fashion that uh, decision makers can have uh, more information at their fingertips as they make decisions, whether that's making a decision about uh, something at a comp their company or making an investment decision like to buy or sell a stock. This information will help them be more informed. There's so much information out there, uh, and, and your company sort of collects it all, but you're, you're sort of looking, I don't know if you're looking for trends or if you're looking for sort of, uh, you know, high points in the data. What, what, what are you seeing? What, what, what sort of piques your interest when you look at the data? Uh, mostly, we listen to our customers. And when they tell us, you know, here's something that's of interest to us, can you go out and, is it feasible to go collect this information? We then uh, do our best to set up a process where we com collect the data clean, complete, consistent, uh, in a manner that is very usable from the end user's perspective. And in terms of the end user, they're, they're varied, aren't they? I mean, they're different walks of life, different income points, uh, geographically different. How do you find sort of, is it like a needle in the haystack? You're looking for the one that represents so many others? So we've been around since 2006 and our, our biggest customer has been the US government. Yeah. Um, and then we sell to the folks here at the Barrel Elites Conference, a lot of these hedge fund and big uh, mutual funds, big institutional investors. The, the use case for them, which is uh, our biggest growth engine at the moment, is, is uh, to help them better understand the, the stocks and the industries they're investing in, using data they, they, they might not have otherwise had access to uh, uh, as they make these decisions. Are there any pitfalls or risks involved in some of this data that you're collecting? Yeah, it's hard to do. What we do is very difficult to do. Uh, it's, and it's, it gets even more difficult when you start talking about doing it at scale. So collecting you know, information from thousands of different sites uh, you know, every day, collecting it on a daily, weekly, monthly type basis. Uh, so it's, it's a real challenge to do it. Uh, and and uh, we need to be on top of that. So, not, not if, but when something goes wrong, we need to be able to identify that something's gone wrong, notify our customers, fix it on the fly. It's kind of like fixing a jet engine while you're flying and, uh, and make sure that going forward, it, it is produced in the correct manner. Why do companies need this data, data from the web? Is that just where their customer base is? Yeah, it it's really is where a, a large chunk of business is done these days. So if you're a, any sort of consumer facing company, you're going to have a presence on the web. All your competitors are gonna have a presence on the web. Uh, your customers are gonna be seeking you out on the web and you need to have an understanding about what's going on uh, with your competitors for competitive intelligence. Now, if you're an investor and you're investing in these companies, you wanna understand what they're doing out uh, you know, with pricing, uh, inventory, what type of products they're selling, what type of brands are, on their, are, are listed on their site, what's doing well, what's not doing well. And that gives you, again, some edge, some insight into uh, the way co the company is working uh, that's going to help you have more conviction in buying or selling the stock. Is this proprietary information? Like, are you it's, feeding we, it we, out to we, different companies? We collect. It's all publicly available information. Okay. We do not, uh, in, in you know, doing this sort of thing, web scraping, collecting the information off the web, uh, it, you, you can't, uh, you know, um, fake logins, that sort of thing. So this is all information that's public available to anybody who'd like to go grab it. We just go grab it and then organize it in a way that uh, it's, a, it's easier to work with and we do it on a consistent basis so we have history going back, in some case over 10, 10 12 years, uh, where we're collecting it every day or every week to give you some sense of what happens over the course of time in different economic environments and uh, you know, you know, gives you some insight into what might happen as things change going forward. Well, I'm sure, though, because it's all public information that's out there, there are competitors, uh, competitors, competitors out there who really are doing the same thing you are. So how do you differentiate yourself, your company, from another one? Yeah, there are a lot of competitors. And, and people will say this can be easy to do. Yeah. It's very difficult to do well. 
and it's very difficult to do well at scale. And we've managed to do that. There's another angle on this, which is this is a very, when you talk about institutional investment firms, it's very heavily regulated. And, and so there's a lot of, 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 of rules that you need to make sure you're in compliance with. And really, without that uh, in place, none of this, none of this would work. So we've, we've helped shape those rules because we've been doing this for so long. We work closely with our, both our customers, uh, both our customers and the regulatory bodies in the space to, to really understand what we can do and cannot do and stay on the side of you can do. So when you talk about compliance, you mean in terms of you know, get, collecting personal information, personal data, and to distributing it widely, right? There's certainly that, which would be PII, personally identifiable information. You don't want to go anywhere near any information where you might be able to identify a person. We avoid gotcha. that completely. But there's also collection practices where you may fake a login to get some information that's behind a firewall. That sort of thing uh, is, is, is nothing, you know, that, that would be out of bounds. So <clears throat> we are, uh, we've helped shape those rules for the industry. and. Uh, when you're talking about such a heavily regulated industry, like institutional investment firms, um, you know that is a, a to, to stay in compliance with those rules and policies and procedures is a huge, huge thing. Is this a priority? Do you think for companies and for investors to to get accurate data from the web, or are they looking at a bunch of different sources in order to do their business? They're looking at a bunch of different sources. Web collected data is one of them. And, and because, again, their customers, their competitors are all living on the web, um, they, they, they want to have some understanding about what's going on. That could be very insightful for them uh, about all kinds of trends that are going on. But there has been an explosion in various data sources over the past, certainly five to 10 years. One, because there's just been a lot more data created. Two, because the tools are getting better to engage with that data. There's only so many firms, if you say, hey, great, I have this million row CSV file that I can give you every six hours. There's only so many firms that can manage that and, and incorporate that into their investment process. Uh, uh, so the, the tools that have become available really help people drill into what's important, what's not important, and what am I looking at with, with regards to metadata. And <clears throat> that's just, feel, it feels like we're just beginning. So where does the future, go from here in terms of data collection and then also the safeguards that are in place in terms of compliance. You know, where do you see this part of the industry going? Oh, uh, well, with regards to compliance, it's, it's, it's kind of ever vigilant. You always want to be paying attention to those rules and, and staying on top of the rules of the game, with, whether they're coming down from our customers or the, the SEC or whoever it might be. And it's important to stay on top of those. Uh, as far as the, the data more broadly, um, you know, I compare it to, I'm a huge baseball fan. I compare it to baseball. So, so 20 years ago, you looked at, you know, batting average, home runs, RBIs. Now we have advanced analytics where you're looking at OPS, launch angles, that sort of thing. Um, and, and that has taken a relatively short period of time where nobody making any decisions about a baseball team at any serious level down to high school is doing, making those decisions without those advanced analytics. Similar things are going to happen with decision making across the spectrum, whether it be investment management in your business at the government level, where there's just so much more information available, it'll seem silly to make decisions without that information. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right, John Farrell. Got it. Thank Vertical. You, Derek, yes. Derek Dennis. Yeah. Derek Dennis, yes. Thank you, Say, Derek. Name your company uh, again. John Farrell from Vertical Knowledge. Vertical Knowledge. Thanks so much for joining us here. All right. Barrel Elite's Alternative Investments Conference continues. I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News. We'll have more later.